Let's call it a second. You can hit her up on Facebook. You can hit her up on YouTube. Hey! Keep it straight face in the daytime when MCs all the jokes and comments get signed. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody, and welcome to MCU Ballpark, home of the Brooklyn Psychos. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Randy Millar, and I am here today with the High School of Sports Management, supporting their sixth annual softball event. So, with me being here today, we're going to be doing live interviews, and most importantly, talking to the people in the stands, making sure they're having fun. So, everybody, we're going to keep you in the game. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, I am Randy Millar, and I'm here with a very special woman to the staff and students at the High School of Sports Management. And her name is. So, Ms. Stanson, so how are you involved at the high school of sports management? Well, I work for the community and I try to find ways, you know, big on education, very big on education, and I find, try to find schools, programs, and um, throughout the community to help students. As a matter of fact, my daughter is the assistant principal at the high school of sports management. And, um, you know, they, the job that they do is so phenomenal, phenomenal to me because we have, since we have so many cuts in education, my thing is they don't educate, public schools don't educate the students the way they should be educated. And I've had this fight since my children were children because, you know, they, they put them in these programs saying, you know, uh, calling them advanced programs. Mm -hmm. And to me, they weren't advanced. They were just programs, and if you taught everybody the same way, they they would be on the same page, you know, learn. And they took so much away, and we still have that fight, but the high school sports management seems to be focused on the students and what they can do and teach them. Okay, you sound like, uh, let's see, like a community advocate, but then you sound like more so of a concerned parent. So, I'm both. So, I, so I'd like to know, who, who made you, who made you to start doing things such as this, like being in the community, looking for different programs and schools for children? Well, what happened when I first moved to Marlboro, it was a beautiful community, it was clean, you know, we had schools seem to be good, you know, and, and they, and people were concerned. Along the way, I don't know what happened, they started getting a different group element of people in there, we started having crime. The programs all started disappearing, and you know, and I, and I still, but see, kids and people seem, seem to start blaming the children for the problems. And I said, well, it's not the children's fault because children, you know, they, if you don't have anything to, to, to expand, to broaden your horizons, to expand your mind, to use your imagination, to let you know if you're not exposed to anything, it's going to be a problem. You know, they have nothing else to do. Somebody's putting guns in their community. It's not the kids. You know, it's got to be somebody higher up. And nobody seems to care. So, you know, I said, this is wrong. And I just decided to try to help, you know. And, it, and it's just what I do. You know, I never thought it was anything special. It's just the way I am. I, you know, I've been helping kids. When my kids were small, all the kids would come to me. You know, I was big on homework. I babysat, homework was an important part of their, you know, life, educating, you know, reading books, you know, and getting exposure to something outside of where they was living. So what programs you would like to see come back into your community? All right, first of all, I want the schools to bring back the arts. They need to bring that back. They need to bring back, you know, it's everything now. It's like kids don't even have a chance to really express themselves because all their thought process seems to be in one word because, you know, it's computerized and you don't have to think anything out. You just have to fill in the blank, put in one word. You don't have to think in a whole complete sentence, which is a problem for me. You know, and they don't have, they don't have gym, so everybody's fat and they're sitting around, you know, on a computer. And, you know, and, they, and, I, and I hate the fact that, you know, they don't have shop anymore so that you can at least find out. Maybe you find that you like woodworking because you're using your hands and you never knew that. You would have never known it if you didn't have the chance, if you like to cook because you had a cooking class. 
you know, you can find out things that you like to do. And I don't want people to think that you have to get a job. I think people, kids should be empowered with what kind of business can I own? Who's going to work for me? What can I do for my community to bring somebody else up? You know, things like that. And, and as you see, it takes a village that's to raise a child. It does. So, we would like to thank you for most importantly doing this interview. Thank you. And the camera staff and myself, we would like to see you do more work in your community and, and bring a positive light to your community. I plan to, and I and I hope all of you are going to be coming back to your school and bringing something back to the community. I'm sure you will, because what else is there? <laughs> You're exactly right. Thank you. Yeah. Let's go. Hey, hey, what'd you say, what'd you say? You know what? It doesn't matter anyway. You weren't here riding with me yesterday. Thanks, man. Appreciate it, bro. Appreciate it. We'll be back. Catch y'all later. Ain't got time to sit here and entertain. Well, if it's not singing, I'm not game.